All right, here is part number two. So we're gonna create a very simple drawing today, and then you're going to go ahead and add color after that. I'm gonna show you one step at a time. <coughs> so there's some examples on the Google Slides. Your finished project is going to look something like that. You're gonna have somewhere between two and five kitties on your fence. We're gonna start with the fence, and then we're going to go ahead and add the cats. So you're going to find a final piece of paper. Try to find one that is a nice heavy piece if you're going to use watercolors. So I put some watercolor paper in the new bundles of materials. I'm using watercolor paper because I'm going to paint. If you're going to just use colored pencils, crayons, or markers, you can go ahead and use whatever paper. Even computer paper will work for this. Um, our kids in school used a bigger sheet of paper, um, but I'm going to just here at home, I'm gonna just use a nine by 12 piece. So I'm gonna to try to do this upside down so you can see it correctly. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna put our hand at the very bottom of this paper. If you have a small sheet, um, a piece of computer paper or something just slightly bigger, I'm gonna keep my hand closed and then make a little dot up here where my thumb touches. If you're, going, if you're looking at it differently and your hand is this way, thumb at the bottom, pinky at the top, you can make a dot where your pinky touches. But that's just to um, measure how far from the bottom. If you have a large sheet of paper, if you're using a large sheet, you can spread your hands out and you can make a dot there. You just want to make sure that when you're creating this horizontal line, and Mrs. Beerman did not want to do it with Sharpie. I'm going to turn my paper over. When you're doing this horizontal line, you want to make sure it's about a third of the paper down here, and then you have about two thirds up here. I'm going to switch my paper over so I have so I can erase some of my lines. So I'm starting with that horizontal line down here at the bottom, and then I want to um, create my fence. And before we go any further, I want to remind you that the lighter you draw in pencil, the easier it is going to be to erase. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find about halfway down or halfway across my horizontal line, and I'm going to draw myself a vertical line down my paper. Okay, once I have that, I need to draw five vertical lines on this side and five vertical lines on the other side. How am I going to measure that? Well, I'm gonna measure that about the width of my thumb. Now, you could get a ruler out and you can, keep, and you can measure away. You can also just eyeball it. You can do your thumb, and every time you do your thumb, you're gonna make a little hash mark. So there's three, four, and five. I think my thumb is pretty good at measuring that. Let me show you what it looks like. But I will also give you one more helpful hint in just a second. So if you have a thumb, now mine is not perfect. Mine are not perfectly spaced, but that's okay. Um, you can go back and just eyeball it. If you think this one is too far apart, you can erase it. Um, again, if you drew lightly, you should be able to erase it quite easily. So there's my middle line I already drew, and then I have one, two, three, four, five more vertical lines on the left. Let me do the same thing over here. However, I'm gonna show you a little trick. I can also find my halfway point here. So there's one line. Now I know I need five total, so I need to do two on this side and two on this side. I'm going to just eyeball this one. There's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. Not perfect, I'm a little skinny on this side, but I think it's pretty good, okay? So go ahead and get your fence drawn, and then we'll go on to the kittens if you need to pause it. Okay, so from there, we want to figure out how many cats we want. I'm working on a small piece of paper, so I'm only going to do two or three. If you have a bigger piece of paper or you have more space, you can do more than that. So I'm going to start with the ears. I'm going to start with a V shape or an upside down V shape, and then just a curved line in the middle that attaches to my next 
V shape. So I know I want a cat here. I know I want a little smaller, maybe daughter cat, son cat up here in front. I'm going to do the same thing. Two upside down V's connected with a curved line. And then I'm going to do another cat over here. Okay. My advice is if you have a shorter one that's going to be up close or up in front, you're going to want to do that body next okay because that cat will probably be in front now you can do a very simple body just by bringing those lines straight down or curve down just a smidge you can also do something a little more fancy like you can do the cat's head and then you can come back out with the body now because my two cats are kind of close if I saw the whole cat it would go all the way down here but my little cat is in front of okay so do whatever kind of cat body appeals to you um, we'll know they're cats once you add the face so don't don't spend too much time on the, those cat bodies but notice that I am taking up quite a bit of space I didn't make them teeny tiny I did keep them on the larger side okay so from there we're going to give our cats a belly, just a little spot for the belly, okay? And I'm drawing lightly just in case I want to erase something. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a kitty cat tail. So I'm going to have this tail coming down in front and then curving back up to my kitty. Now because it overlapped some of my fence lines, I'm going to erase those. Because my kitty's tail is not see-through, I want to make sure that it looks correct. Okay, You can have them come down. You can have a kitty's tail come up like this to the side. You could have one of the tails going off the edge. They can be straight. They can come down straight. They don't have to loop. They can just come down um, in a curve. But what you want to make sure of is if you are doing that curly Q tail, let me flip my paper over for a second. If you are going to do that curly Q tail, that when you do it, if you're going to do it, you're going to make a big curly Q. Don't go too far. We're just going to go in one time. See how much space is there? because I need to be able to double it up, double that line up, so I'm able to fill it in with color later, okay? Um, if I have my little baby cat over here and my other cat here, um, remember, you can come up, it can be a straight tail, you can come down, um, you can just let it hang, however you wanna do it, but go ahead and add tails to your cats. From there, I'm just gonna give my kitties just two little bumps for feet. We're not making anything fancy here. Two little bumps for feet. And then you can go ahead and add your kitty faces. The only suggestion I have is that when you do the kitty nose, it is an upside down triangle, not a right side up one. We don't want our kitties to look like scarecrows. So an upside down triangle, and then you can make the little hooks for the mouth. You can give your kitty whiskers if you'd like to. That's up to you. You can do little whiskers that stay on the face. Okay. Um, your eyes. However you want to do the eyes. I would try to give my kitty that almond shape or that football shape eye, the cat eye shape. Um, if that is hard for you, you can do ovals. You can also do very easy closed eyes if you want to just keep it like that, okay? Um, your kitties can look in different directions. So maybe my mommy kitty is looking at the baby kitty, the kitten. You can have them look in different directions just by shading in those pupils. But we're keeping it very simple, okay? From there, you can be done if you don't want to add any more details, or you can add stripes to your cats. If you want to add stripes, I would just do some easy triangles, okay? And that's really all you need for this.
As soon as you are done with your pencil, you're gonna go ahead and Sharpie all over all of those lines. Do make sure you have erased any lines that you no longer need. So when that cat's tail goes in front of the fence, I don't see any of those vertical lines. We don't want our cat's tail to look see-through. Okay, so go ahead and fill that in or go over those lines with Sharpie. You should still have those. So you should still have one at your house. Um, if you don't, you can certainly use a black crayon that's up to you, um, or a black color pencil, anything like that. I'll be back to show you how to add color in just a few minutes. I'll put it on another slide, but you're off to a great start. I'll see you soon.